top-down, arcade-style Grand Theft Auto games. That's one and two. And then the pretty early, you know, Grand Theft Auto 3, that was in 2001, that was kind of awkward, but it established a lot of the conventions that we expect from Grand Theft Auto today. Although I enjoyed Vice City quite a bit, by the time Vice City came around in 2002, I was already experiencing a bit of franchise fatigue, genre fatigue. Either way, I wasn't really feeling Grand Theft Auto from that point on, not the same way I was when I was younger. Well, in 2004, San Andreas would come out, and despite me thinking, I don't really want another Grand Theft Auto, I found myself liking that one too. Well, Saints Row came out in 2006, and although I had access to an Xbox 360, I didn't see anything special about it, and I skipped it, really. I would revisit it later, but not until I'd played the sequel first. So, enter Grand Theft Auto 4 in 2008, and I was thoroughly unimpressed myself with the single player. But I came back for the multiplayer mode and enjoyed it with friends. Although Saints Row 2 had come out, I'd wait for its PC release next year. What I got with Saint Row 2 honestly disappointed me. I'd already had my fill of the same kind of content that Vice City and San Andreas had brought. And Grand Theft Auto 4 failed to impress me. So what did Saints Row 2 bring to the table? Well, if you ask any Saints Row fan, Saints Row 2 is the holy grail the gold standard by which the entire series is to be judged, at least by them. For me, it had some memorable characters, funny situations, although a lot of the dialogue was awkward as hell. I just, just wasn't impressed by Saints Row 2. I thought this is more Grand Theft Auto, I don't like Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, you know, you're supposed to be building up your crew and that's the core mechanic that's supposed to differentiate it somehow between Grand Theft Auto, but ultimately, you go on the street, it's open world, you commit crimes, you get money, and in this case, you get respect, which is more or less just prestige currency. But other than that, I just, I simply wasn't impressed by what was going on in the story. I was already sick of Grand Theft Auto, so Saints Row 3 comes out, and... They were decried for being pretenders to the throne. The people were confused. Oddly enough, I actually find it somewhat endearing. And the reason is, is because it is absolutely batshit crazy off the wall. You've gone from low-key, fairly well-grounded stuff to now destroying the world, pretty much. I mean, you're ripping a vault out of a building and carrying it away in a helicopter. That is the insanity that is going on. But after the initial shock of the insanity wore off. It was more or less just Saints Row 2, but several levels dumber with less interesting characters. It had a brand new user interface, a fresh coat of paint. Everything felt fresh and new about it as far as the actual presentation went. But when it came down to the core gameplay, it was just more Saints Row 2. Just again, as I said, several levels dumber and it counted on that silliness to somehow carry it, and it didn't. It was, again, a fairly disappointing game. So, fast forward a few years, and I recently, just, just recently tried Saints Row 4. The game that everyone told me, oh, this is horrible, this is the nail in the coffin for the Saints Row franchise, this is terrible, so on and so forth. More fun, less mercy killing. This simple choice revitalized the Saints, transforming them from a degenerate street gang into beloved pop culture icons. But even then, the Saints were not satisfied. For it's one thing to be revered as a hero, it is another to be a hero. And that, my friends, is where our journey begins. I love it. I love Saints Row 4. Quiet, listen. Saints, glad you can make it. Got it. Take it personally. <laughs> Why would you? I should have killed you with steel board. Or maybe take it personally. Steel board. Ruined America. Ruined America. Ruined America by letting you live. Time to destroy Washington and start over. You know why? They took the city from Saints Row 3 and they turned it into the Matrix. No, I'm not joking. The game initially has you doing a kind of counter terrorist mission. This is our final chance to say goodbye. 
first met. I was just a fun-loving girl in dreadlocks, but you, you saw me as more than that. We sat by each other sometimes, and I don't always understand your methods, but there's no one I'd rather follow into battle. Wow. You said, hey, Piz, how would you like to be the face of the saints? And I was all, I, I... <laughs> this is a persona <laughs> moment. Like, seriously. Yeah! I'm willing to risk mine too! He's going to face it all by himself! You'd be so willing to sacrifice yourself to save the world. <laughs> I suppose I wouldn't have tried to kill you. Well, we just met, but, um, uh, you seem to know. You save the White House. And you land in the Oval Office, and then, bam, presidency unlocked. Presidency of the United States unlocked. Press all buttons to initiate thermonuclear war. <laughs> Chief of Staff unlocked. <laughs> Vice President unlocked, and you're the President of the United States. The aliens invade, you manage to beat up the alien leader, but ultimately the aliens win, and you're put in the Matrix. So what you have is you have the same user interface from Saints Row 3. You have the same style and presentation as Saints Row 3. You even have the same city as Saints Row 3, except now... S random landmarks and buildings have been replaced with alien technology because you aren't actually in the world of Saints Row 3. That got destroyed. Earth gets blown up. You are the last of a ragtag band of survivors trying to free the last of humanity from this simulation. You know in Saints Row 3, if you pissed off the cops enough, then they'll come with tanks and things like that. Well, in Saints Row 4, if you piss off the cops enough, it'll start making these distorted noises. The cops' faces will begin to mutilate and shift, and it'll go as they're replaced with an agent from the Matrix, or in this case, an alien. Oh, shit. Holy shit. It's awesome. The cop cars will be replaced with alien hover cars. They'll start coming after you on alien speeder bikes. In short, the more you disrupt the Matrix the more crazy it gets. Now, as the story progresses, you end up finding bits of code that were left behind when the simulation was damaged in the past. You begin to collect those pieces of code, and you begin to gain superpowers. And so the game shifts from a Grand Theft Auto-style ripoff, which the Saints Row franchise has been in my eyes, into a superhero simulator. This is like Marvel or DC or City of Heroes MMORPGs. It's like that, but in a single player game in a Grand Theft Auto style sandbox. And there are tons of tasks to do. You're fighting for territory in the Matrix because as you take over these parts of the Matrix, the, those parts of the computer system are slaved to Kenzie, who is your resident hacker and she can use those to hack further into the alien systems and eventually take over their mothership. Originally, it's just running fast, but it begins to change. You end up gaining the ability to super jump and glide and use kinetic energy and shoot blasts of fire or ice. And in general, the game just keeps escalating and it never really stops. You see, as where Saints Row 3 tried to say, we're going to be different from Grand Theft Auto because we're silly. We're silly, we're zany, we're insane. They took that in Saints Row 4 and escalated it to the nth degree to where it actually is fun and different. And it was those superpower systems they implemented that made it fun and different. Because ultimately, just being a silly Grand Theft Auto is still being a Grand Theft Auto knockoff and no amount of interesting characters are going to save it if the gameplay isn't fun well i've had my fill of grand theft auto i played grand theft auto 5 for instance just for the multiplayer just to play it with friends i'm not interested in the single player and i suppose i get this way with many of the franchises i mean not just grand theft auto but 
Call of Duty, Battlefield, Assassin's Creed, all these games that come out at a frequent basis or have been rehashed over and over and over, I don't see value in them anymore. But Saints Row 4 managed to create value where there was none in my eyes by adding in these superpowers, by making zany challenges to where you are literally picking people up and throwing them through rings as a part of an alien game show where they randomly shout, do a barrel roll, and <laughs> you have to pilot your way out of the alien mothership. Just like in Grand Theft Auto, like in Saints Row 2 and 3, ultimately the gameplay in 4 is extremely repetitive. However, because you keep gaining new powers, new abilities, enemies keep getting stronger, new enemies get introduced, the game keeps feeling fresh and good and honestly I've enjoyed the hell out of it and I recommend it. I especially recommend it with its DLC, Enter the Dominatrix. It is so meta that they are talking about the DLC as a DLC in these little side windows while you're playing the DLC. It's a thoroughly enjoyable experience. In fact all the DLC brings something to the table although Maybe not as many as others. I'd recommend holding off for a big sale, obviously, if you want to get all the DLC together with the game. That's what I did. But I would dare say that Saints Row 4 is the best game ever created in the Matrix franchise. It's aware it's a Grand Theft Auto ripoff. It's aware it's a Superpowers ripoff. It's aware it's a Matrix ripoff. It even rips off parts of Harry Potter. That's how insane it is. So if you're looking for something that pretends to be Grand Theft Auto at the beginning and then escalates into the Matrix and then beyond into space, I would definitely pick up Saints Row 4. Either way, thank y'all for watching. Check the links for more content and I will see y'all next time. Don't worry, I'm certain I can fix this up to suit our needs. I just need some time. Hey Kinsey, you wanna fuck? Let's go.